Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to share my 7 ways to make your illustration a little more magical. You can choose how magical you want to make it. You can go overboard and show like literal magic, or you can take a more subtle approach like I did with this white stag illustration. So to start off, what makes something magical? To me, it doesn't have to be literal magic spells or spell books or things floating around. To me, it can be adding a sense of wonder, or maybe it's something seemingly unbelievable, but somehow it might just be possible. So it's up to you how you want to show magic in your illustration, but I hope you'll be able to use these tips to create a truly magical piece of your own. So tip number one is to draw something uncommon or unusual. Sure, you could draw a frog, or you could draw a frog riding a rabbit. Maybe the rabbit looks like a normal rabbit, but the frog is more personified and looks more like a character than just a normal frog. You could draw something rare, like I drew a white stag in this piece you're watching me draw. Um, I could have drawn a normal stag, which would have been a brown color, but we all know white animals, especially when they aren't normally white, is something unique, something special. It instantly adds more interest to the piece overall. You could draw a landscape completely lit by fireflies. Well, yeah, it could happen if there was enough of them, but how often are you going to see it in real life? Things that glow instantly spark that hint of magic. Which brings me to tip number two. Add actual magic effects. This could be a magic aura surrounding your subject. It could also be runes that are lit up and glowing, like in this illustration I did with these badgers cozy in their little burrows, and there are a couple of runes on the big rocks above them. Um, they're actually Norse runes, but you could, you know, make up something or base it off of actual runes like I did. It's up to you. You could also have elements floating or looking like they're being controlled by a magical force. Think of that older animation, Merlin, when the wizard uses magic to clean the tower. Or think of the series Harry Potter, that kind of magic. Draw a witch, that'll instantly make your illustration more magical. And you can focus on creating a more unique witch, one that really resonates with you. Tip number three is to draw fantasy creatures. This one is taking um, the more literal approach. You can research mythical beasts or creatures of legends. You can draw more well-known beings like fairies, vampires, or sirens. And how you draw them is up to you. You can put your own spin on it or draw them how they are typically portrayed. I always find it really interesting when someone draws a more like common fantasy creature in a really unique way. Tip number four is having a focused composition. By this I mean have a clear focal point and make sure the composition is balanced and makes sense. In this illustration I kept it very simple. The focal point is the stag's face in the moon, which is framed in by the darker trees on either side of it. While the composition is simple, the elements in it are a little more unique. Picking a more simple idea but focusing on the subject in a more bold and straightforward way can really help push the magical feel of the piece. If you already have something that is unique or very different than the norm, it's going to draw a lot of attention to it. But if you also have a very chaotic and busy composition, it can kind of take away the focus of those unique elements in the piece and kind of make it less interesting. So in this case, less is more. Tip number five is relatability. Taking something that already exists and maybe twisting it or adding something to it that gives it a more magical vibe. You can try changing the scale of the main subject or even the background elements. Maybe instead of a typical mountain range, make it huge. Try changing the viewpoint and scale of the other objects to further show its grandness. If things are too unbelievable, it can be distracting or even make us lose interest. Try and keep a balance between the believable and the unbelievable. Tip number six. Create a sense of wonder or awe. Try unique camera angles or viewpoints. Show what plants and flowers look like from the ground up. Maybe the image is in the viewpoint of a frog and it's looking up at all the reeds and grasses by the water's edge and there are some other frogs nearby. Try and think of that childlike sense of wonder you had as a kid where everything was so special how can you put that into your art? 
ask yourself what if and see where that takes you. What if a camel had wings? What if mushrooms had feelings and faces? What if every non-living object was alive? This can be a great way of brainstorming for a more complex illustration by keeping things more childlike and comical. You could also draw some old ruins. This adds a sense of wonder, and you might ask yourself, who did these ruins belong to? What were the people like? You could leave it up to the viewer to decide who wants to live there. And lastly, tip number seven is to use a limited color palette. Like this illustration, I chose blue and purple colors as the hierarchy, with subtleties of brownish yellow and green, which instantly makes for like that more magical forest rather than a typical green and brown based forest. And why? Because trees aren't purple <laughs> or blue. Um, therefore, something magical had to take place to make them that way. Think about changing the colors of elements in your illustration. Instead of a gray rabbit, make it a pink rabbit. Or instead of green grass, why not make it purple? Just be aware when you do start changing colors of things, always look at the overall image and make sure all the colors work well together. Maybe the pink rabbit doesn't fit, but a blue rabbit does. I tend to really like more subtle ways of adding magic to my work, like using runes or making something glow, or using unnatural colors for elements in my work. So for the rest of the video, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, my drawing process for this illustration. I do have a video up kind of explaining my process more in depth if you'd like to check that out. So I've titled this piece Sublime. I think the word suits this piece very well. Let's look at the definition. Sublime. An adjective meaning of such excellence, grandeur, or beauty as to inspire great admiration or awe. I think this is the perfect title for an illustration like this, showing the sheer beauty and rarity of a white stag in what seems to be like an enchanted forest. I want to just briefly look at the thumbnails for this piece. I pretty much knew exactly what I wanted to draw, it was just fine-tuning the composition and working out the placement of the antlers surrounding the moon. Thumbnails play such an important role in making a great piece of art. And it's so easy to test out new ideas during this stage to quickly see if it would be worth moving forward with or not. I really liked my overall drawing of the refined sketch, and I love the texture I got on the trees, and I really wanted to bring that into the final line work. I loved adding all the cuts and tears into the grasses at the bottom of the image and drawing them like twisting and bending over each other. Drawing the tufts of hair on the stag was pretty cool too, but the antlers were very interesting to draw. I loved adding the cross contour lines showing like the form of the antlers, and I add these same kind of lines on the tree trunks and branches too. I think it adds that unique layer of detail that I find just really interesting. As usual, the coloring process was pretty hectic. I do apologize, there's not much footage on the coloring process for this piece. I was really discouraged with how the color was looking um, that when I came back to working on it, I didn't want to record because I thought I was going to scrap the piece, honestly. I had a really hard time settling on a color palette and like the overall feel and mood of the piece. I originally wanted a more natural, kind of woodsy green and brown forest with the white stag, but I was having a hard time making it work and liking what I was doing. Plus, I wanted it to be different. I wanted a more magical feel to it, and I felt like a normal forest just wasn't going to give me that feel I was looking for. So after trying some color overlays, one of them casted a bluish purple haze over the entire piece and it instantly felt like I had come up for fresh air. It looked so interesting and gave the piece that magical look I was going for. So I kept messing with it and eventually ended up with something I was very happy with. So yeah, that's a bit about how I create a more magical illustration. I hope you're able to take away something useful and use it to create a magical piece of your own. If you have any other things you want to add, definitely leave a comment on this video and be sure to check out my video description for links to my socials, including my shop and Patreon. And be sure to follow me on Instagram for a look at each month's Patreon rewards and keeping up with what projects I'm working on. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!